Firebase is a platform that provides us with various services that make building applications easier. One of those services is Firebase Authentication, which pretty much acts as an authentication microservice so that we don't have to roll our own authentication. We don't need to host a server for authentication, sign our own JWTs, implement some kind of complicated forgot your password flow. Firebase Authentication will just do all of that for us. Now keep in mind, there are some benefits to rolling your own authentication server, but I'm not gonna discuss that here. For this video, we are just going to focus on Firebase authentication. Now I did say Firebase authentication was easy, but there are some difficulties because there's no official .NET SDK for implementing Firebase authentication on the client side. There is a REST API that we can call, for Firebase authentication on the client side, which I actually demonstrated in my refit video, but even better, there is already an existing open source SDK that wraps the REST API and allows us to use Firebase authentication. The only con is that it's not actually supported by Firebase. So we have two projects. First, we have our client application. This is just a console app, so I didn't wanna have a UI for this tutorial because I just wanted to solely focus on Firebase authentication. So in our console app, we are going to call Firebase for things like logging in, and registering a user and then we're going to get back a firebase access token which we're going to use to authenticate against our asp.net web application over here so i just have a single route on this data controller and we have to authorize the user if authentication passes then we return okay otherwise we'll return a 401 unauthorized so our api is going to use the official firebase admin sdk and then our console app is going to use the open source third party client SDK. But before we can set any of that up, we are going to have to create a Firebase project. So here in the Firebase console, we are going to create a project. I'm just going to call this the Fire Demo. This demo is Fire. We're not going to enable Google Analytics and we can just create our project. All right, project is ready. Let's continue. So a few things we have to set up right away. We have to head over to authentication over here in the sidebar and we have to get started with authentication. So that'll get everything set up. And now let's configure a sign-in method. So we're just going to enable sign-in with email and password. We're not gonna set up any of this other third-party authentication because it's pretty difficult to implement those OAuth flows in a non-web application. So just gonna stick to email and password. We should be good here. Now let's head over to our project settings and head over to service accounts. And we need to generate a new private key. So this is what we're gonna use on the server side. So let's generate that. This is confidential, so we definitely do not want to check this into source control or anything, but we just get this JSON file. We can move that into our project. We'll just plop it right at the root of our API project and we'll rename it to Firebase config.json. And then the last thing we need in this project settings is over in the general tab, and that is our API key. And this is what we're gonna use on the client so that we can communicate with our project. And the API key is not really secret, so we can just copy this. And in our program.cs, we'll just paste it right in here as a const, the API key. And there we go, we got everything we need to communicate with our project. So let's start off on the client side. And the first thing we're gonna have to do is install that third party NuGet package. So this is called Firebase Authentication.net. So the only complaint I have about this project is that the .NET at the end is not all uppercase. So I feel, I feel like that just looks weird. That's not really how I'm used to seeing .NET, but let's install that. And now we are good to go. So back in our console application, let's First, set up a Firebase auth provider. So import that from firebase.auth. And this is pretty much a facade that does everything related to authentication through that package that we just installed. So we'll call this the Firebase auth provider and we will instantiate that. We need a Firebase config passed in and that just takes our API key. And that's actually everything related to setup. So all we have to do now is take our auth provider and first off, we need to create a user. So let's create a user with email and password async Pass in an email, we'll do singletonshawn at gmail.com. For a password, we'll do test123. And we'll throw in an optional display name too. And you could send a verification email as well, but I'll leave that as false because this actually isn't my real email. So we're not gonna do that. And then this is async, so we have to await this. Let's make our static void maiden async task now. And this also returns a Firebase auth link. So let's get that Firebase auth link. And this auth link contains some user information for the user that we create. And it also contains a Firebase token that we can use to authenticate against our server, which we actually haven't implemented yet, but we will in a second. So let's put a breakpoint here and see this. And before we do that, if we look at the users for our project, we have no users right now. 
but let's go ahead and register a user. So there we go, looks good. We got a Firebase token. Let's continue. And now in our project, let's refresh. And there's the user that we created. So that was freaking easy. We just registered a new user with pretty much two lines of code. Now, if we run this again, we'll get an exception because our user already exists. So for now, we're just gonna comment this out. And instead, what we're gonna do is go ahead and I believe the method is called sign in with email and password async. So let's do that. And we can do this since our user obviously already exists. So let's see if we get our token again, which we should, and we do. And this Firebase auth link also contains useful things like a refresh token. We also get some user information. So we get our display name and is our email verified in this case? No, we get a photo URL. So definitely some useful stuff that you could potentially throw on some kind of UI. So registering and logging in are the core methods that we're gonna be dealing with here, but there's tons of other advanced things that you can do with Firebase via this package. So you can change your email, change your password, delete a user if you have this Firebase token. We can take care of password resets. So just so easy, we don't have to roll it ourselves which does have benefits, but is also a pain. So now that we have our Firebase token, we're ready to call our API, but our API is not ready to accept our Firebase token and authenticate our user. So what we're gonna do is head over to our API in the startup.cs, and we are going to have to add authentication. Our default authentication scheme is going to be JWT bearer. So we need to specify that here with JWT bearer defaults and we have to install a NuGet package for that. So install that and we want the bearer authentication scheme. And now we're actually going to add a scheme. So it's going to be a custom scheme and this scheme is going to be for our JWT bearer defaults authentication scheme. So let's copy that and use that. And then to add a scheme, we need options for the scheme and then a handler that's going to take those options. So our options can just be the regular authentication scheme options. So import that and then our handler this is gonna be a custom handler that's gonna do the Firebase ID token verification. So we'll call this the Firebase authentication handler and we will create that. So over in our project, let's add a new folder for authentication. That sounds good. And inside here, we'll have a new class for the Firebase authentication handler. So create that. And this just needs to inherit from authentication handler. And this is an authentication handler for the default authentication scheme options, which is an abstract class. So let's implement that. And and now we have this handle authenticate async, which is gonna do the Firebase ID token verification. And it's gonna be async. Oh, and we also need to generate this constructor to pass to the base class as well. All right, so a lot going on here. For now, let's just return authenticate result dot no result and put a breakpoint here and test this out. And before we can do that, let's import our authentication handler in our startup. Oh, and we also have to pass in I think we can just pass in an empty action here. So just take our options and just do nothing with them. All right, let's start up our API and let's open up Postman. So we need to make a request to localhost 5000. I believe our route is just nothing. And let's actually set our authorization header and see if we can see that in our custom authentication handler. So let's make this request and we hit our breakpoint and let's actually look at this class. So this authentication handler actually has our HTTP context on it. And if we look at this, we should have the request and the headers, authorization header, and there's our bearer token. So what we're gonna do is this bearer token, in our case, is going to be our Firebase JWT. So we're gonna use that in this handle authenticate async method to verify against the Firebase admin SDK. So let's head into managing NuGet packages and we want the Firebase admin. So Firebase admin by Google, let's install that, the official SDK for Firebase on the server side. And now finally, let's do the authentication. So first we have to get that Firebase token out of our HTTP context. So we want the Firebase token and we're gonna take the context, which is on our authentication handler, get the request, look at the headers, and we want to get, and actually first let's see if it contains an authorization header. And if it does not, then we will return their result. But if it does, so let's actually get that header down here. So I believe we can just index into the headers with authorization as our key. And this is gonna be our bearer token. It's just our token with the bearer prefix. And we wanna make sure the bearer token is not null, which I don't think it should be. 
And we also want to make sure the bearer token starts with bearer as the value. But if the bearer token is null or the bearer token does not start with bearer, then we're going to return no result again. Cannot authenticate the user. Although actually we should probably do authenticate result.fail because they did try to authenticate. So we'll say invalid scheme. But otherwise we're going to get the token. So we'll take our bearer token and substring this bear prefix and get the length of that. So this will give us back everything after the bear prefix, which is gonna be our Firebase token. And now we're ready to verify that against the Firebase admin SDK. So for that, we are going to take Firebase auth. So import that from the Firebase admin SDK. We'll get the auth for a Firebase app. So that is gonna to have to be dependency injected into this handler. So that's gonna be a Firebase app field. So generate a field for that and add that to the constructor. And then finally, we are going to verify an ID token async and pass in our token. And this returns a Firebase token, so an actual class. So let's get that. And if we look at that Firebase token, that has our wonderful claims, which is what we ultimately want. So using those claims, we're gonna take our authenticate result and this is gonna be success. Let's create a new authentication ticket and pass in a claims principle. So a new claims principle, which takes an enumerable of claims identities. So let's get a new list of claims identity. And this is becoming less and less fun, but let's initialize this list with a single claims identity. And this will finally take all of our claims. So let's get a little helper function in here. We'll call this two claims and pass in our Firebase token claims. So let's generate that method. And inside here, we'll just return a new list of claims. And honestly, I don't even know what the keys for this dictionary are. So let's put a breakpoint here and we'll figure that out when we get to debugging this. But the authentication ticket also needs the authentication scheme. So let's pass that in. So that was JWT bearer defaults, import that. And we want the authentication scheme. And my parentheses are all messed up. So let's fix that and we should be good to go. So now we do want to inject this Firebase app. The only issue is that we have not actually instantiated Firebase app and registered it in dependency injection. So what we have to do is we are going to add a singleton for our Firebase app. And this is just gonna be the result of Firebase app to so import that and create. So this will create our Firebase app using Google application default credentials. So the way that these work is it reads an environment variable and that environment variable is going to point to our Firebase config JSON file. So let's head into our launch settings.json and define an environment variable for our launch profile that we're using. And the key for this is Google underscore application underscore credentials. And the value is going to be our Firebase config.json. Let's make sure this copies to our output directory, which it does in our case. So that should be all good. We should have our app initialized and ready to use in the authentication handler. Put a breakpoint here just to make sure it does get injected. And let's try this out. All right, so sending a request in Postman. All right, so it looks like our app was injected and this was initialized. So we got our default app and here we go. We're ready to authenticate. So we should contain our authorization header, which we do, so that is good. We got our bearer token, bearer one, two, three, four. And then the only issue is that our verification fails because that is not a valid Firebase token. And we actually get a 500 internal server error. We don't even want that. So what we have to do is wrap our verification in a try catch because we do see that this does throw exceptions if the verification fails. So we definitely wanna handle that. Let's move all of that into our try. And if we get an exception, then we're just gonna return authenticate result.fail. And oh, we can even pass in an exception. That's easy. Let's do that. So now this should all work. We just need to get an actual Firebase token to our server. So for that, we're gonna do that in our console app. And for calling our API, I am gonna use refit. So let's get a NuGet package in here for refit, install that. So refit is just a REST library that allows us to easily call our API. I have other videos on refit if you're interested in seeing more of how it works, but all we have to do is just define an interface that is gonna represent the endpoint that we wanna call. So we're gonna have an interface here for the I data service, and this is gonna be a git request. So import git from refit to just the empty route. We're gonna call the server asynchronously, so return a task, and we'll call this method git data. And the only parameter we're gonna have is our bearer token. So in my refit videos, I demonstrated how you can call the API without having to pass in the bearer token to your methods and just setting up some kind of middleware to automatically do that. But just to keep things simple, we are just gonna pass in the token here. 
So add an authorized attribute, and this is a bearer token, and we'll just call the parameter token. And of course, it is a string. So now using refit, we are going to create a REST service for our I data service, and our host URL is HTTP colon slash slash local host 5000. So this gives us back our data service. And now let's call our data service. So we'll take the data service and get data, pass in our token. So Firebase auth link, the Firebase token that we get from signing in. So I actually want to debug both of these at once. So I'm going to open two solutions. So in fact, let's just have them side by side. Let's start the server over here. So here we go, server going. And let's start the console app over here. Here we go, moment of truth. All right, so we got our Firebase token back from Firebase. So we did sign in. We're gonna call the get data method on our data service. Let's do it. All right, so we did successfully verify that ID token. And now we got all of these claims. So let's actually open this up, maximize this so we can actually see and see what these claims are. So we got our name, we got our email, we got a user ID that we could use in a database or something, and we can even see if the email has been verified or not. So we will get these claims into our actual list of claims in just a second. But let's head into our data controller and see if we did successfully authorize. So let's continue. And, oh, we still get 401 unauthorized. So we still need to fix some things over here so we can get into our data controller and get past this filter. But first let's set up these claims. So we got user ID. So we'll have a new claim can just be ID. Might wanna put that in the const somewhere so you can get it later. And inside this dictionary, we wanna get, I believe it is the user underscore ID. And we want that as a string. And then let's also snag two more. So the other ones we want are the email and the name. So email is just the email key. And then same thing with name. So all good on the claims. So after quite a lot of debugging, I figured out why we are getting unauthorized still. So start the API, start the console app, and we get that 401 unauthorized exception. The reason for that is because when we instantiate this claims identity, we need to pass in the authentication type, which is actually just the name of this class, which I don't even understand that. I really don't know why, but that is what needs to be done. Let's try this again. So run the console app and here we go. We get into our data route. So authentication was successful. And if we take a look at this, we can look at our user on our HTTP context and we got claims on here. And now we can get all of our user data inside of this endpoint handler. So you might want to make a database query, get some data for a user, something like that. Anything's possible because we now have authentication scaffolded out. So we got Firebase authentication set up, didn't have to roll authentication ourselves, and now we can just focus on building our dream application. So just to review real quick, we got authentication on the client just using the open source third-party package. Very easy to use using this Firebase auth provider. We can sign in, we can register, all kinds of different functionality using this facade. We get Firebase tokens back that we can use to authenticate with our own backend server. So we have this data service that we created using refit to call our API. And then on the API, we configured authentication and our startup. So we got our Firebase app instantiated using the Google default credential. And then we added custom authentication using a custom scheme handler. And that is where our actual ID token verification lives for Firebase. So hopefully you can apply this to your own application to quickly set up authentication. I think I'll even be using this Firebase authentication setup in one of my future applications on this channel. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. So bonus content, let's make this not ugly. So let's move bearer to a const. So extract that to a constant, the bearer prefix. And now we can use that everywhere. Let's try and clean this up a little bit. So we'll extract this to a method, create authentication ticket. Move this claims principle to a variable, just a little bit cleaner. So the claims principle. And there we go. I think that's good enough. Peace out, everyone.